Hi, join me today where I'll be painting these hydrangeas in a flower pot. Today I'm using a size 10 and size 6 round brush. I have my Simi Art and Sonnet watercolors. I have my watercolor palette handy, two jars of water, one for rinsing my dirty brushes and one for painting with, and I have a clean cloth in case I make any goofs or need to blot anything. I'm also using my 4x5 pre-cut watercolor paper. This is cut from the 350 GSM watercolor paper from Dollar Tree. Let's get started. So what I want to do is start with these loose puddles of just clean water. And I'm making them a little bouncy. They're not perfect circles. They're, um, they have some holes in them or open areas that do not have water and I'm using my lavender and I just want to drop pigment very loosely into these watery areas and then just kind of outside them too. I want to have some things that that are outside of the water. A little more pigment for this third area and these are the base the bases for our hydrangeas just keeping that really loose okay and then I want to rinse off my brush And I think I want to use my gold ochre for my uh, vase. And I like this. It's just a it's just a gold that has a nice amount of character to it, and it's really quite complementary to the blue and to the purple that we will put in there as well. Um, and just decide on the shape of your vase. I just want a regular, tall, uh, and I want this to be a bit deeper. I want a bit more pigment over here. And then what I want to do is just take my clean water and brushing from this side, so making an outline there, and brushing that and blending this all together. And then I think I'll take some pigment and just fill that a bit. Blend that. Leave some light or even white areas for a little bit of a highlight. And make one side darker, maybe even underneath the top a bit, a bit of a, more of a shadow over there. Nice, I like it. Okay, we have a bit of time while this, while these hydrangeas are drying, and I noticed I went out a bit here, so not that it's a huge deal, but I'd like to clean that up a little bit. And see, this is just to show you that we can do art without being perfect about things, and it's okay, and you can, you have options, you have ways to kind of make things work that, that maybe got messed up, or you can kind of leave them, kind of doesn't matter. Just cleaning that up. Okay, so while these hydrangeas are drying, I want to take my olive green and I want to start some leaves for these, but I want to be careful not to really touch in too much to where my florals are. So I just want to kind of 
have these areas earmarked, I guess, for my leaves, and they can kind of layer in, that's fine. They don't really have to touch my florals yet. I guess is the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, I like it. I like that. Hydrangeas are so fun. They are very suited to being painted loosely. And I think that's one of the things I just love about them. They are, they're just fun. They come together so nicely. Okay, these are still very wet. So, I think what I'll do is work on my shadow. Just going to brush it, not quite touching if I can help it. And then just kind of make that, the bottom shape of it kind of messy so that it's not just a, you know, a circle or an oval. I'm using my Payne's Gray for this, just kind of blush, brush that to blend. little more Payne's Gray in that. Just kind of up at the, um, up at the top, very near the, the vase. And you know, don't panic. If you get some of this pigment um, kind of muddied with the vase, I, I certainly wouldn't worry about it. I think, you know, that can happen. You can end up kind of pushing some of the pigment out and it's not a big deal. So just letting that kind of dry, I do think I'll go ahead and take my heat gun and help it a bit. Actually, actually, no, I'm not going to. And the reason is because I see some areas that are a little drier and I, while those are not quite dry and still drying, I want to go ahead and add some of this purple. So I'm using dark purple And I guess I have a little well of it right up here. And I'm just going to start gently so I can kind of test this out. But just dropping in some little dots of pigment. Now see, this is more wet. So what I'll do is I will come back where I have touched pigment and it was just super dry I will go ahead and uh, and help that blend a little bit but you know you just want some little clusters of of some of this pigment okay and I'm just taking plain water there is a good deal of pigment on my brush not I mean not pigment water I'm not really concerned about it could I have maybe um, you know just brushed more of it off sure but but that is what it is and, and I think it works it's fine I'm coming back over that anyway for some more layers so we'll just see what it does and I kind of want to take a little of this purple, a very light amount, and just, well, I have some areas that are just kind of resisting it, which is interesting. Okay. I like it. So now I want to go in with maybe a little deeper wash. Now I don't know how deep I can get this lavender. It's a very pale color. It's very light. And, uh, and so if I can't really make some deeper pigmented areas, then what I will probably do is mix it with just something that has 
a deeper value and I'll probably end up doing that anyway so some of this is showing up especially in these lighter areas of of uh, of this pigment where maybe there was more water okay cute cute so I'm leaving some of those areas really a lot less pigmented because I really want to retain some of that white in there. I think it, I think it's really cute and it will look eventually like highlights um, in the flowers in those petals. So I am going to go ahead and go with my heat gun and just start this drying. I'm going to be really careful and ease in because I don't want to push pigment. So this may take me a few minutes, but it will be faster than letting it dry. Okay, that's nice. And I still have some areas that are just a little damp. So just as I, as I go into this with more pigment, I just want to keep that in mind. Just be aware of it. So I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to make some dots. And I do want to be just kind of um, thinking about all oh, the shape of these little hydrangea petals. They're usually, I think, like four petals. And... They kind of make their own little flower and then they're all just clustered together on these stalky branches, stalky stems. And so there will be, you know, based on the direction, there will be shadows in there. And so just kind of thinking about that and making sure I have some, some depth, some tonal depth. I want some you know, some of the tones to be deeper. And uh, so just, uh, just starting to dot in a little more of this um, dark purple pigment. And this down here is still quite wet. So I, I feel like I kind of want to avoid it still. So one of the things I like to do here is just kind of make a couple of dashy kind of petals together. That's, that's just kind of what I'm doing right there. Obviously I ended up with just some pigment bleeding there and that's okay. That's going to be background. Any place that that happens for this, for sure, that's just a good um, background feature. I do want to change my brush. To just a slightly smaller and I could probably go smaller than this six um, you know I have a I have a three but I I just prefer working with this six so I'm going in with just a tiny bit of water on really kind of the tip of my brush and I'm just touching these places where I placed pigment and kind of touching that in somewhat of a petal shape and letting that just kind of bleed into the water that I'm brushing out there and nothing too fancy is really happening it's just spreading some of that pigment and I had this uh, the lavender that I brushed a moment ago as well and so just Thinking about kind of touching all of those or most of them and you can see that's already kind of creating some depth sometimes I'm surprised when I'm using this little brush and I I feel like I'm using such small amounts of water but I'll be surprised at at how much pigment is um, moving and how wet that seems to be it just can sometimes kind of surprise me so now here again we just kind of have some wet to deal with 
and I think I'll just use my heat gun again. Okay. And that's mostly dry. There's one little spot over here, but I'll just be sure to really brush off the excess water on my brush, on those bristles, and just kind of keep this to a minimum, keep that, um, just how much water I'm releasing on there to a minimum. Now, while this is drying a little bit more, I want to take a bit more olive and I want to add some, some shadow, just kind of make these stems and leaves just a tiny bit more detailed. So what I have here, I can easily see that that could be a highlight. And so just kind of working with that instead of against it. And, and I, I don't like to be meticulous about this and not that I can't, it's just, I still do want to retain some of that, the feel of this being um, casual maybe. So I'm not trying to make it super detailed or realistic by any means but just kind of taking some lines into these leaves and I will probably go and soften that last one up a bit because it it just kind of looks a little too strong, a little too, it's a little too much for me. And this is really easy. And I, you know, I'm trying not to overthink it. Goodness me, I, I don't want any of this to be laborious or anything like that, but just softening that up so it's, yeah, so it's not so much, but I like that right there. And I think you could easily go in and add some, just some deeper parts to these leaves. I like it. I like that real well. Again, just keeping it simple. There we go. I like that. Sweet. Yeah. Take a little stem kind of thing that way. And let's take one up here. Okay. This can kind of come over here. Okay, I love this. I am in love. Just some little bits of of green just peeking out and I'd like that to be just a little more subtle because to me it's it's in the background so just kind of softening that up okay Oh, I like it. And, uh, you know, I've still got some, well, I don't really have too much that's still damp inside these flowers. And, uh, and so I want to just go in and make a few more of these blue petals with my lavender. <laughs> I've talked about this lavender so much because to me it is so seriously mislabeled, but <laughs> you'll just, you know, let me have my, let me have my things, okay? <laughs> I need this. I need to be able to be fussy about that. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm loving this so much. So fun. Just these little dots of pigment 
little, you know, two little petals here and there. And, uh, and then we'll come in and touch those with a bit more of the water. We'll also use a little more of this dark purple pigment. And I, you know, I'm just trying to be aware of how much of, of the value, you know, the color value that I'm putting in here. So, you know, if I wanted a little lighter, earlier I came in with this dark purple and I had, I had just really overdone it. And, uh, and so now I'm just thinking a little more about um, having a bit more water and that making it a, a lighter wash of the color. And see, I think that's the reason I like these, this particular size of brush is I feel like I get these nice little petals. And you kind of want to go different directions with those. You know, you don't want everything going one way or the other. Now, as you get to where maybe it was darker, you can use a bit darker value. So just, you know, this pigment is not going to have as much water in it. And just really light with your, with this touch here, you're just adding in these sweet little petals. And this could be monotonous if you let it, but if you just enjoy it, and I like the mindlessness of it, honestly, I think it's, uh, it's quite relaxing. And I like to see, you know, it's just not too hard to make flowers just begin appearing. And, you know, I want it kind of abstract. I don't want it too, too detailed, too perfect or anything like that. But, but I like seeing that, you know, wow, this is starting to look like an actual flower. I think that's really fun. Okay. And then I just want to go in with a little more water. And I want to be careful about this because this is where it's really easy to just lose everything you've done. So I go and I brush all of the water off on the side of the jar. And then I also just slightly, uh, I slightly blot my my brush on my cloth here because I do want to soften up some of these flowers but I don't want to just blend all this pigment back into um you know just a puddle just a muddy puddle so so that's my point there is just do that and I think that is just a little softer so I like it And then I think where we will really bring this together is by taking some of this lilac and just a tiny bit of the dark purple and mix those in a very light wash and just kind of take that in. I feel like that needs a tiny bit more of this purple. And that makes just a really pretty orchid color. And I think it's just gonna kind of tie it. I don't wanna obliterate all of my white. So I'm just kind of creating petals just where I think it could use petals and kind of going different directions. Yeah, I think that's tying it in really nicely. Very cute, very fun. Hydrangeas always make me think of butterflies, just doing these, uh, these petals, I think. Okay, I love it. Really, really do. Okay. Maybe put a little dot of 
you have some uh, places where you can kind of just dot in a little pigment if you think it needs it. I'm super happy with that. Super easy, quick little, quick little um, card here. You could add a little sentiment to this. I honestly feel like this could be used for so many different things. And I think anyone would love to get this on a card as wall art. Got some, need to get a little more depth back here just because I feel like this was so dark. So I just want to balance that a little bit. Just take a little more pigment to that. Okay, I love it, super happy. Just a quick little hydrangea card. Anyone could do that. I think, uh, you know, if you wanted to be, to go the extra about this, then you could finish out this pot on the back side. And just using that, you could use the same color. You could use a brown, but just that little bit of finishing there. You can leave that center area white. You could fill it. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this. I hope you painted this with me today or that you'll save it for later and paint it. Let me know how it goes. And as always, happy painting.